Welcome everyone to Neverwinter on PC. My name is Reiner and today I will be releasing a new version of the character builder. If you enjoyed this video please leave a like and if you would like to see more information over this about Neverwinter hit the subscribe button. A couple days ago Sharp Edge released this spreadsheet on the Neverwinter forums. Uh, it takes a while to see what it's about, uh, but let me help you. This spreadsheet lets you calculate in different scenarios whether you live or die from certain attacks in the Tower of the Mad Mage trial. And if you die, you can see how you can basically stay alive. You can tweak some defense buffs and debuffs and by that you can determine how to stay alive. Now this thing is not editable, you have to download it and then go make a copy and then work with that. Basically this is extremely useful seeing that a lot of people are really struggling with the trial and often this is because they underestimate the importance of defensive stats. Now this spreadsheet is kind of advanced. It works with effective hit points which is a concept that not everyone will master. After Sharp Edge made the spreadsheet, we talked a bit about it and how helpful this is for the community. This gave me an idea, which you probably can already guess, but we'll get there. Uh, we are now on version 0.4.8. Um, 0.4.7 is also out there. I did not make a video about it because I did not deem it worthy of a separate video. But let me quickly uh, tell you what was in there by going through the change lock. One second. Ooh, fancy. So 0.4.7 on the 16th of October I released it and basically it has the changes to the wall lock. It has the change to Vorpal. I fixed the custom gear tool and I added some sort functions. Uh, this is actually this is actually very nice. Um, and campaign equip powers are now sorted alphabetically. Yeah, that's also nice. So the gear I would like to show you real quick. So gear, you can, here you have a lot of gear and this is difficult to find what you need. So you can sort it either by name. So now it's sorted by name. You can also sort it by item level. So the highest item level is at the top. Uh, and you can also filter it by equip power. So here are all the equip bars that you find on this gear. And if you, we are now on the head pieces, right? Yeah. So if you want the, um, uh, what's it called? The 5% damage in Undermountain. Here, this one, Undermountain Hunter. If you select it, you will find only gear that has this equip bar. And this makes it a lot easier to find the gear that you want. Because typically you select uh, gear based on this equip power. So that's now also possible for all the different gear of course. Uh, and the companion equip powers, uh, let me real quick, select this. So here if you select the power, now this is all alph alphabetically uh, sorted. So that's that's a lot easier to find now. Ah, yeah, I need to make this colored. Anyway, so that's 0 0.4.7. A relatively small update, just some fixes to make it correct again because of the changes of the game. Here you can already also see the changes. Uh, 0 0.4.8, the first thing, and you already saw it, I guess, um, I made the builder a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. So now it looks like this. Um, it has, um, yeah, it, it just looks nicer in my opinion. It's, it's a little bit teal with the black background. It has some... Um, Nicer contrast, in my opinion. It's not so basic anymore. I also have a nice uh, header bar. It is, I really like this. Maybe you don't. I am thinking about adding some options to one, go back to the custom or the, the default view, or maybe add some more styles in here uh, that you can pick a different style. Because I, I think not everyone likes the dark style, so you can, uh, if I add styles, you can add, uh, you can pick something else. Um, the other thing, and that's of course the one that we're here for, uh, I added 
the Tower of the Mad Mage Survivability Analyzer. So you can find it on the extra content analyzer, Tower of the Mad Mage Survivability. And here you have it. Um, at first, it might look a little bit complicated. Uh, to the left, you have all kinds of inputs that you can input. This is all um, side effects. It's not about your own build. It's all side effects. Uh, your own build, you just load. Uh, you, you, you load your own build and it will use that build. So here are my hit points, which you can also see here. And these are my hit points. They're also here now. And it also uses my defense and my deflect, which determines this here, and also my crit avoidance. Uh, so here are the percentages for Halicell to crit, to deflect, blah, blah, blah. Uh, here you see all the attacks. I categorize them in unavoidable hits. So these ones you always have to be able to tank. And you can already see that with my build, I would die if I don't deflect Superstorm. Superstorm is the uh, starting power of the electric um, uh, rotation and it would, die, uh, it would kill me uh, by 152,000 HP. But I do live uh, somehow. And that's with these options. So typically I don't go in there with zero shields. I always have some shield and also some other stuff is active when we go in there. You also see tank hits. So these are for everyone. Everyone will get hit by this. You also have tank hits. Tanks have to be able to tank th this stuff. So it's not really applicable for me normally. Uh, it shouldn't be. Uh, I could deflect one annihilate stack uh, or the first uh, hit of annihilate if it deflected, for example. Um, things like that. Hypothermia is for the healer it should not crit uh, so here you see if you're alone it will do more damage um, if you're with two people it's divided by two etc etc this is all unmitigated damage by the way you can see exactly what the damage is so 1.1 million base and here you can see what mitigated is so if it hits you you basically reduce it in half because my defense is kept but uh, 550,000 hp is more than I have, so I will die in this situation. You also have avoidable hits. These basically shouldn't hit you. So if you know what to do, these should not hit you. By the way, we have a lot of names here of powers. Maybe not everyone is familiar with it. If you're not, um, and also how to avoid these avoidable hits can be found in the Tower of Mad Mage Guide made by Sharp. Uh, who also helped me with this tool of course as i said before you can click on here and it will open the guide which is super elaborate uh, it it contains all kinds of information about all of these powers and exactly how to to work with it it contains a lot of information there so make sure to memorize what's in here so you know how to do the trial so now about these input fields um, you can Basically, let's go from the top, uh, the shield HP. This is the first part here, it's about shields. Um, shields can have two sources. Uh, as far as I know, you can have a lion mount, which gives you a shield of 90,000. You can also have a paladin, which will give you barrier. Now, barrier works of power, uh, weapon damage power, outgoing healing, paladin aura and critical severity, and your own incoming healing. So if he gives you a barrier, you get some hit points. This is your shield, your, your barrier hit points. Uh, now, one thing that's important to notice is that there's only one source at a time. So you cannot have them stacked. The last uh, shield will always override the previous one. So if you have the crit barrier, which is a pretty big shield, this is the shield that you see with people that have a full blue bar. As you can see, it's bigger than my hit points. You will actually have this many uh, shield hit points. If you then use the lion mount, you will actually lose this whole shield. That's something to keep in mind. So fill in the statistics of your paladin here, and then it will give you the correct value of the shield. What's also important to determine the shield, by the way, is your um, incoming healing, which is uh, here. It's for me 36.2%. Uh, I have some 
Rank 13 tacticals in here? That's weird. Okay. So my build here is not really complete. Anyway, if you remove these enchantments, let's say I would remove this. You will see that my shield will go down. So this is why you need the tacticals in here. It's to increase your shield so you stay alive on a hit. And this can add up to quite a bit of difference. Add these back. Don't know why there was the rank 13 in here. No. So my shield will get bigger and bigger when I change these to 15. 15 and this should also, oops, this should also be a rank 15. Okay. So now I have a shield of 355 HP. And now I live through Superstorm. So without this, I would die. But if I have the shield, I will live. And this is how I survive. Um, next to dodging all of these, of course. If you would still not live, that's for example, say you get this one, uh, Superstorm would still kill me by 71,843 hit points. Um, typically for Superstorm, what people use is a griffin. So if you enable this griffin, uh, the damage is actually reduced by 15%. So if you hover over this, it will also show you the debuff. So here you see that the damage, the mitigated damage is 848,696. If you enable this, the damage is only 411,992. And I would live by 861 hit points, which is not a lot. So uh, having a small barrier and the griffin would be enough to keep me alive, but it's really, really marginal. Anyway. So then there's a lot of different sources of shields. You have defense buffs, which are multiplicatively added. You have the normal, if they have the damage debuffs, which are multiplicatively added. You have a separate warlock life bind where warlocks take 10% of your damage, which is not advisable for the warlock, but okay. You also have temp HP, which you have. Uh, Wheel Earth gives you 100% of your hit points as temp HP and stack heart 15%. So that could also help. Uh, temp HP works a little bit different from the other HPs, but I'm not going to bother you with the technical details about this. Um, with this tool, you will be able to see how well you will do with certain attacks. So make sure to make your build in this builder and use this survivability analyzer to see if you survive all attacks. So these should all be live, and if there, if it's not, you can see how to survive them. So I think that should be all for this video. Uh, I don't want to make it too long. One last thing. For more information, uh, we almost have a Discord now of 1,000 people. Uh, and there's a lot of talk in there, people discussing uh, Mod 17, uh, builds, Tower of the Mad Mage, there's, there's a lot of discussion, so make sure to come to my Discord and join the party. You're missing out. If you have any remarks on this video or any suggestions on what to investigate next, feel free to leave a comment below and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and see you next video.